as a psychologist that a lot of us are eating ourselves to death because of unaddressed depression, on, teach man. trauma, That's right. teach yeah. verbal, Come physical, on, and sexual molestation from childhood that we refuse to face. Right. And so we run to the refrigerator trying to sedate ourselves on, because man. we don't want to face ourselves. Come on. Say that. Come on. First Lady Michelle Obama got a whole campaign on obesity right now, but I don't see anything related to the psychological triggers of obesity. Remember, while you are eating and drinking, the neurological activity of the brain that allows you to feel sad and depressed gets interrupted. So the reason why you overeat is because while you're eating, you feel good. Food makes the brain feel good. And so you keep on eating to not feel bad. But as a result of that, you never face your issues. And then obesity brings about more depression, which begs more the obesity because you eat more, and then you get more depressed. A lot of black folk are not overweight because they're in love with food. Right. They're right. overweight because they're looking for peace of mind, and because right. they ain't got a little bit of sweetness in life, they get the sweetness from the refrigerator. Mm. 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 These are the facts. Dang. Mm. And we gotta stop letting our children get touched, because I'm getting sick and tired of getting Come phone on. calls about little black girls being molested by uncles and grandfathers. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 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 Keep your damn right. hands off our children, oh. and we gotta start cutting them off. Yeah. Black men, we're gonna have to make a couple examples. Come we're on. gonna need some brothers walking around like Billy Rumpo. <laughs> Too much molestation in the black community. Too much molestation. Receiving in the church. Eddie Wrong wasn't the only one. Eddie Wrong. Eddie Wrong. Eddie Wrong. Eddie Wrong. Eddie Wrong. In fellowship, not alone. Ladies molest too. And a brother confessed to me not long ago that his mother would climb into his bed late at night and attempted to try to get him to have an erection so she could. Have sex with her son. Pathology. Sickness. And we keep on brushing it under the rug. Mm -hmm. You gotta stop brushing the rug, bring it on out. Mm -hmm. You got a pedophile in the family and everybody knows who that person is and y'all don't want to expose them. Uh -huh. So now you give him now you give yes. that pedophile permission to molest right. every niece and nephew. Yeah. Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yes. And sickness begs more sickness because right. most pedophiles were molested. Um, That's right. 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 Most of the homosexual boys I work with were molested prior to the age of 12 by a male relative. Wow. Yep. I just got finished working with a young black boy. Told me that his cousin, who he was living with, they had to share the same bed. First of all, no more bed sharing. That's over. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, are y'all following yeah. No more bed sharing. Yeah. I don't, no more of that. You can't yeah. do it because children are being exposed to things. Right. And you and I weren't exposed right. to them. Right. And they like to experiment. With right. Them. Yes. Because you let them yes. watch stuff and hear stuff right. that puts oh. thoughts in their heads. Right. Right. Yeah. They want to experiment. Yes. See, remember, no child is born with the knowledge of sex. Yeah. Right. So if you got an eight year old yeah. trying, to trying to penetrate a three year old, yes. you yeah. automatically know that the eight year old was exposed to something right. that yeah. he shouldn't have been exposed to. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The problem in the black community is we have blurred the dividing line between who's a child and who's a parent. Right. Right. In fact, in some homes, the children are the parents. I see them wandering the yard around. Mom, go to the store for me. Dad, clean up my room. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and then to make it worse, some of us are scared of our own damn children. Right. I've seen black boys ready to beat their fathers up in front of the principal. Right. My father was a drill instructor for the United States Marine Corps. I couldn't even fathom now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> have to fight that man. And I'm 37 years old. A little, a little bit of fear <coughs> is essential right. to raise healthy children. Right. Yeah. Be a parent yeah. before you yeah. become a friend. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Many of us are girlfriends and boyfriends Woo. to our children. No, 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 no. I'm your parent first. Right. See, here's the thing. We let our children make decisions that can mess up the rest of their life. Right. And right. if they mess up the rest right. of their life because you gave them the freedom, freedom. to mess it up, mm -hmm. they're going to blame you, you for the rest right. of their life. Why right. do you think so many yeah. of our teenage girls leave their daughters on their grandmothers? As one young lady <coughs> told me, the reason why I make her watch my daughter every day, Dr. Umar, is because she let me get pregnant in her house. Whoa. Mm. And had she not allowed me to make an adult decision, I mm. wouldn't feel mm. the lack of guilt for letting her raise the children. So since my daughter is here because of her, she can raise her. Uh, that's dope. Whoa. It makes sense to me. That's, that's worse than rich. <laughs> this is real life. You. you don't decide whether you want to get pregnant. You don't decide if you're going to hang out with the wrong children. And many of us don't even know who our children hang with. Right. Right. Right on. Going all day, you don't know where they're at. I don't know where they're at. Yeah. What's my rule for that? There should be four places. 
with four phone numbers. Mm -hmm. You should be able to pick up a phone and dial one of them numbers yes. and put your hands on that child. Yes. And if you can't dial one of those four numbers and know where your child at, you're not on your job. That's right. Why you not on your job? Yeah. Because most black boys who get arrested get arrested between the hours of 3 p.m. and 7. Exactly. Yeah. Most black girls who get pregnant get pregnant between the hours of 3 p.m. and 7. Yes, so if you're not guarding that 3 p.m. to 7 time, you're messing up that child's life. Yes, sir. Do you know where your kids are between 3 and 7? Yes, mm -hmm. Do they even come home at all? At all? Is your son still on a football team even though he's flunking out of school? Ow! Is he still on a basketball team even though he's flunking out of school? You ain't raising a child, you raising a damn Negro. How in the hell can you still be a star athlete and you ain't even got the grades to graduate from high school? Uh, and you got your sons running around thinking they're going to the NFL and NBA telling right. you that only 1% of all high school athletes will become professional. Only one. So if he don't make it, what does he do then? Start robbing cars, hustling credit cards, armed robbery, because mom and dad let me grow up thinking I was all that when in, when in the real deal I was none of that. Come on now. Come on. Every parent in here needs to have a notebook. Every time you have a conversation with somebody from the school, you need to write down exactly what they said, when they said it, the time that they said it. Your notes will save your child. Your notes will save your child. Your problem is you don't write nothing down. Mm -hmm. All you do is give a lot of lip service. Start writing stuff Amen. down. Every time you have a meeting with a teacher or a principal, you follow it up with a letter or an email summarizing the meeting. This is a note just to remind you that we had a discussion today and you said my son was doing better. <laughs> we're going to reconvene in two weeks to see how he's doing then. Why is it important for you to do that? Because next week, if your son cut up, they might try to build his ass out to school. You got to be able to go back to your notes and say, time out last week, you said he was getting better. So if he was getting better last week, how do you try to throw him out this week? Write down what happens in the school. Because I'm going to tell you right now, the school write down everything. So they pay your phone to they write down half of his lies that they made up. Right. But it's on paper. So it looks like it's the truth. White folk beat you with the pen in the pad. And you got to fight back with the pen in the pad. Nobody can make you put your child in special ed. Nobody. Unless you put your child in special ed, they can force you to keep them in it. Yes, right. Yeah. right. Yes, Nobody sir. can make you put your child on drugs. They can't force you to give your child Adderall, Cyclip, Ritalin, Depakote, Prozac, and Paxil, Seroquel, and Zoloft. But once you do, Child Protective Services can come in and force you to keep them in. And I know families right now who don't have children at home, they were taken by Child Protective Services. It's called medical neglect. Refusal to give your child psychiatric medicine. That's right. Blame yourself. Because nobody told you to go asking white people what's wrong with a black child. Come what's wrong with a black child? You are. The parent. Whenever I see a failing child, I know there's a failing parent. And there's a failing community behind that parent because community institutions are supposed to help the children. Definitely. You know what bothers me? How in the hell we got a church on every other corner? Oh, yeah. 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 Don't tell me about the church on every corner. But we ain't got to have a school program. Thank you. We ain't got a writing program on every other yeah. corner. Yeah. We ain't got a math support program on every other corner. Every church should have some sort of an academic support or right. behavior support or mentorship program for children Ooh. that doesn't force them to swallow your dogma. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. Yes, sir. Come on. If he ain't a Christian, you're supposed to help him because he's black. He ain't got to be a Christian. Yes, if he's not a Muslim, you're supposed to help him just because he's black. That's right. He ain't got to be a Muslim. I say I'm a lake on the YouTube. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Your race is far more important than your religion. Come on. Right. African people been on this earth for two million years, right. and you want me to throw that out That's for 1,500 years of Muhammad or 2,000 years of Jesus? Go you ahead. out of your damn mind. Come on. Now, why are our culture away from no belief system? Hey. Right. When they all was copied and stolen from Nile Valley civilization in the first place? Come right. right. on. Nothing new about an immaculate conception. Right. Mm. Nothing new whatsoever. We've been had that story. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Religion is supposed to serve the needs of the people. Yes. Sir. But if you notice in the black community, there's no black consciousness in our Islam. There's no black consciousness in our Christianity. You got to go somewhere else to find out who you are. Yes. So I come here to pray to God, but I got to find out who I am somewhere else. Yeah. That's a dichotomy that shouldn't exist. If my religion doesn't serve me, it automatically serves my oppressor. Right. Right. A damn oh. mega church. You sucking the money out of the black community with this mortgage. Right. Poor mothers out there passing that tray around putting dollars so you can pay the mortgage to a white bank 
that's using the money to push black people out the neighborhood. Right. Yeah. Right. Any institution in our neighborhood that does not employ black men or women shouldn't be there. If you got to pay the bank $15,000 a month for mortgage, then there should be at least 10 black people earning a living yes. off of that 15 grand. Yes. But you mean to tell me you got a multi-million dollar prayer house and you don't put nobody to work? Mm. And we're talking about the Koreans robbing us blind. Hell no. The mega church is robbing That's us right. blind. Yes. Yes. The yes. mega church yes. make way more money than the Koreans ever did. Come on. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. And in case you ain't heard, you'll hear about this real soon. What? 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 Because I know people who know people who know people. Don't oh, right. There is a undercover homosexual ring operating against the black megachurch ministers in America. Whoa. That's right. Some of them are pedophiles. It's going to come to the news real soon. Eddie Long was just the first one. You're going to be surprised some of the other names that come up. Talk about you serving God when you're serving the devil. When we were in slavery, I ain't never leaving my son, and I don't have a son yet, I have two daughters, but I ain't never leaving them with no preacher nowhere. No one, no -uh. Not at all. And what is it about the choir? Can somebody help me out? <laughs> so when a black man joined the choir, what, what is it? What is it? The sun in the, in the holy water? What is going on? Two weeks in the choir and your ass is soft. What is it about the choir? They go in there strong and come out, son. They be clapping and shaking and jumping. Where you at, brother? <laughs> When we were in slavery, these were two guys. I say he can clean up, he can read the Bible, but he ain't allowed to sing. No instruments either. Something about it. Drapetomania black people, this was yep. a psychiatric disorder that black slaves used to be diagnosed with whenever they tried to run away from slavery. Oh. I'm not making this up. This was a psychiatric disorder. You can do your research. In fact, there was a book okay. written on it recently. All escaped slaves were considered to have a psychiatric illness because the want to be free was considered to be a mental condition. Oh my God. And, the, and, the, and the treatment for drapetomania was to whip the living hell out of the slave. Negritude. Benjamin Rush, who signed the Declaration of Independence, he was the chief of medicine at Pennsylvania Hospital, first president of the American Psychiatric Association. He concocted a psychiatric disorder known as nigritude, which he said rendered the brain of the African totally useless and feeble-minded, and the number one symptom of nigritude was black skin. And he said anyone with black skin had nigritude, and he told white folks don't rub up against black people or you would catch nigritude. <laughs> <laughs> well, see how y'all laugh at that 150 years later. 150 years from now, black people are going to laugh at you because they're not going to be able to understand how you let your sons get doped up on a fake-ass right. ADHD. They're going to laugh at you because they're going to understand why your babies is drinking Similac milk when God gave you nature's milk right now. So we're not going to be laughing at them. We're going to be laughed at. Yes. We're going to get laughed at. The reason why the boys can't sit still is because the teacher teaching them can't hold their attention. Right. That's the right. only reason. Right. Right. Remember right. now, the only reason why you got white teachers in the hood anyway is because there wasn't enough spots in the suburbs. Right. The only reason why you got white teachers in the hood is because they don't got loan forgiveness programs where they pay off their whole student loan for hanging with the poor black people. They had to get their loans paid off. The number one problem that black boys have with white teachers is that they want to psychologically castrate and strip them of their right. manhood. Right. And you get mad at your sons for not being willing to accept that treatment. You say, go to school and stay in there. And your son is looking at you like, do you know what's happening to me in that damn school? And you're trying to get them to understand that we need you to work within the system. That's because you have already been broken. Your son has not been broken. Yeah. He's still young. His spirit is still firm. Yeah. So he would rather drop out than be disrespectful. Oh, yes, sir. He still got his yes, spirit. Sir. 
And I'm not condoning dropping out. I'm saying black people have to take some of our disposable income and build the schools that our young men need. Yeah. 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 money. We just spent fifty billion dollars on Christmas gifts. All right, alone. Fifty billion dollars on Christmas gifts. With that type of money, you could have built an independent private school for every black boy in the country. Come on, brother. This world, but nobody has sympathy for black people. Because they say if y'all organize yourself with the money y'all got, y'all be able to shake the foundation of American society. But because you are comfortable with your oppression, because you are comfortable with your repression, because you can look at your children being mistreated and walk right on by like nothing's wrong. Can't nobody respect any people who can't respect their children. On, That's right. And if you want to see the type of respect that people have, you look at how they let people treat their children. Yeah. Chinese right. people wouldn't settle for what's going on with your children. Schools would stop if their sons were subject to what your sons are being subject to. Mm -hmm. But because white supremacy has taught you that you can never beat it, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you simply have acquiesced to it. Mm -hmm. ADHD is the new negritude. Conduct disorder is the new Drake-tomania. They make these labels up, black people. They make them up to get paid off of you. Yeah. And some of us hustling, too, because we want that SSI check. Yeah. Uh, Social Security supplement. <laughs> I had a grandmother in Philadelphia call me up talking about something. You tested my three grandsons and you said none of them need special ed. I said because they didn't. Ain't nothing wrong with them. The problem is that their previous school, they simply ain't been taught. She said, well, I was looking to get a check for all three. I said, well, I don't evaluate the economic stability. I evaluate the child. And although I understood grandma's position because her daughter left her sons on her. And she shouldn't be raising three sons. I told her I could flush your grandson's future down the drain so you can get a couple measly bucks. See, everybody's hustling the black children. The schools is making money. Yeah. Psychiatrists right. make money. Y'all making money, and they get nothing out of it. Every time I put one of your children in special ed, the school gets a 100% increase in the funding. 100%. Yeah. So let's take yeah. Fort Worth schools, right? Let's say the children get $8,500 yeah. per people. Yeah. Once they go to special ed, they're now worth $17,000 per people. Wow. And the problem is nobody supervises how they spend your child's special ed money. So guess what? If I'm the principal, Guess what I'm going to do with your son's special ed money? I'm going to buy my football team new uniforms. Yes, sir. I'm going to get my teachers new computers. Mm -hmm. The kids who the money is coming for don't even get it spent. How is it that I'm worth twice as much as everybody else in the school, but I got the worst academic outcome? Mm -hmm. This is a damn academic schoolhouse lynching. Yes. And we ain't doing anything about it. Yeah. When do we wake up? Hmm. Insanity. Black people during slavery were diagnosed with insanity. Any black person who stood up to fight against slavery, or fight against injustice after slavery were diagnosed as insane and they were thrown in mental health asylums against their will. Mm -hmm. A lot of y'all don't know this, but a mental health incarceration is worse than a criminal incarceration. Right. Mm -hmm. When you get incarcerated as a criminal, you have a right to a jury trial and an attorney. If you receive a non-voluntary mental health committal when they take you to the hospital, you cannot walk out on your own recognizance. If they want to, they can hold you. There's a judge assigned to every mental health hospital in America, a judge. Most of y'all don't know this. Most mental health hospitals have courtrooms in the basement. Because if you decide you want to get out, the psychiatrist can do what? Take you to court. And the judge listens to the psychiatrist say, why you need to stay in because you're a risk to yourself and others. You say you want to get out, you should have never been here. And the judge decides that you do not have a right to an attorney or jury. So what's worse, criminal incarceration or mental health incarceration? In fact, most states have laws that allow the police to arrest anybody who's been prescribed psychiatric medicine but who refuses to take it. They don't write laws for nothing, black folk. If they decide right now anybody on drugs who ain't taking it can go to jail. Psychiatry is a prison. Psychological incarceration, I just spoke on that. Schizophrenia, during the 1960s, black people were diagnosed with schizophrenia, particularly those who participated in the black power and black panther struggle. Why did they diagnose them with schizophrenia? So they could lock them up in mental health institutions, leave them there for the duration of the struggle, and then let them out. Some of them still locked up now. Because what they do is they put you in a mental health hospital and they make you crazy. The drugs make you crazy. The drugs literally make you crazy. Okay? For those of y'all who have relatives who receive a psychiatric hospitalization, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Like, wait a minute, they went in there, they was half decent. Now they all messed up. Because the drugs destroys your sense of mind. And so they use schizophrenia. Now, why are black people more diagnosed with schizophrenia than anybody else in this country? Because soon when a white person here, a black person talk about 
your grandmother came to talk to you last night. She's been dead for 10 years. They get a little crazy. <laughs> See, black people, we talk to the spirits. We're yeah, spirit. That's right. Yes, right. Sure. But you got to be careful what you say to white people because white people don't believe in spirit. That's right. White one. psychology doesn't believe in spirit. The word psyche was an African word that meant soul. Psychology is supposed to be study of the spirit. But because white people don't believe in the spirit, they translate psyche to mean mind, study of the organic brain. As African people, we believe in study of the soul. You see, there's a big difference there. So when you go to the psychiatrist, the psychologist is talking about something. My grandmother came and told me last night that I need to play this number to hit the lottery. They're going to think you crazy until you hit that damn lottery. <laughs> then they're going to realize she must have really came and talked to you. You see. And black folk, we got to remember that we got to stay in contact with our ancestors because they are always with us. Your living dead, your cousins, your nieces and nephews, your grandparents, great, great, great grandparents. You got to call on their name. You got to have your plant at home and pour your libation in the morning and just call their name. Water is a conduit for energy and information. So we pour the water because it invokes the energies of the universe. We do not worship our ancestors. We honor them. That's right. We honor them. We worship God. The belief in one God is an African concept. It yes. doesn't come from Amen. Christianity or Islam. We had it way before Jesus and Muhammad was born. It's ours. We honor our ancestors just like we honored them when they were living. We honor them when they're dead. Because in the African tradition, your deceased relatives have the power to intercede on your behalf in this life. You keep calling on God to solve your problems when God put other spiritual beings in your midst to help you solve those problems. The problem is you're not going through the spiritual hierarchy. You have to go through your ancestors first. God sent you to the earth through your ancestors. And if you want to get back to God, you got to go back through your ancestors. You want to skip around your ancestors, which is the equivalent to disrespect. Yes. And you wonder why your prayers don't get answered. Come on. We got to go back and get what we lost that day. People always ask me, what's the difference between religion and spirituality? It's real simple. Religion has all the answers. <laughs> they know every damn thing in one book. Right. right. Spirituality doesn't have all the answers. In spirituality, you taught that you got to create your own path. Right. Yeah. It is uniquely individual. Right. African spiritual systems don't have dogma. They have principles of spirituality, right. and that's it. You're not forced to accept this person and accept this person and believe in this person. It's irrelevant. It's largely irrelevant. That's dogma. Religion was created by the European to control the way people think. Right. That's why whenever someone conquers a land, they take over the church, they take over the school, they take over the military. Right. They take over the church so they can spiritually incarcerate the victims. Mm -hmm. They take over the school so they can mentally incarcerate the victims. Mm -hmm. And they take over the police force so they can physically incarcerate. But guess what? If you've taken over the church mm -hmm. and you control the schools, you don't even need a military mm -hmm. because the oppressed will kill each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why the two most important institutions for us is the school and the church, but you have to control them. The problem with the church is that most of them is getting that FBI money, faith-based initiative money. Come on, brother. Which has made most of your pastors the new co and tell from. Right on. job is to spy on black revolutionary behavior and report it downtown. That's how they stay in with the district attorney. Right on. Talking about religion ain't political. Religion is the most political thing in existence. Yes. Intelligence testing. I told you a minute ago that mental giftedness was started to resegregate the black kids from the white kids after the Brown decision. Another reason why you see so few mentally gifted black children is because a couple years ago the federal government took mental giftedness out of the special ed register. Which means when I diagnose a black child with mental giftedness, the school doesn't get extra money. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. Uh, yes, the reason why the yes, teacher sir. isn't knocking down your door to get your child tested for mental giftedness is because the principal is telling them not to because they don't get paid for finding the smart kids. They only get paid for finding the problems. Cool. Yes, so in 1975, what happened? In 1975, the federal government said we're going to let white school districts resegregate black kids from white kids, but now they're going to say it's because of a learning disability, mm -hmm. not because of race. And then we're going to pay them for every child they resegregate, which is what they do now. They gave the white school districts an offer that they couldn't refuse. You can resegregate the black kids, just use one of those made-up labels, and we're going to pay you. So the white school district said, fine, let them in. And some of y'all make the bad mistake of sending your black kids to white private schools. Woo! Right. Well, I wanted them to get a good education, but the neighborhood school just wasn't coming. I agree with you. The problem is what? You just jump from the pot into the fire. Because at the white private school, they're more likely to end up in special ed. 
They're more likely to be kicked out. They're more likely to be psychologically castrated. Why? Because white people don't want them there. That's right. The only thing a black child is going to get at a white private school is an education and self-hatred. No. I know because I get the phone calls. In fact, when I was assistant principal at a mixed school up in Philadelphia, the number one reason for why I had to suspend kindergarten and first grade white kids was for calling their classmates nigger. Yeah. That was the number one reason for why I had to suspend kindergarten and first grade white kids. Calling our little girls and boys niggers. Where you think they learned that from? Their parents. And some of y'all walking around talking about, well, you know, poor white people, they in the same boat as the rest of us. Oh, <laughs> Hell, they can be worse. They can be worse. Why can they be worse races than a rich white folk? Because white man's burden. They're always supposed to outperform you. And the fact that they're living in the ghetto with you irritates the hell out of you. Because they're not benefiting from white privilege. So they really can't stand you. Guys. Come on. That's right. Yeah. Propaganda, mind control. Who are the largest communications industries in America, in the world? AOL, Tom Warner, Walt Disney. Many of us don't know that Walt Disney is the largest communication networks in the world. Everything you read, watch, or listen to comes from five corporations. Everything you read, watch, and listen to comes from five corporations. AOL, Tom Warner is one. Disney is two. Bertelsmann is three. Viacom is four. Rupert Murdoch News Corporation is five. Do you know that the FBI and CIA personally publish about 18,000 magazines and newspapers every year? So you read the newspaper, you think you're getting information. That's an FBI document. That's a CIA document. Misinformation is a $500 billion a year. <coughs> Why you think you never seen a real movie on the Nat Turner insurrection? Why you never saw a real movie on the uh, Marcus Garvey movie? Why you never seen a real movie on the Haitian Revolution? Yeah. Because Hollywood is controlled by the United States Congress. Yeah. They don't allow movies to come out that might wake you up. Right. Because they know, right. because the psychologists taught them, that whenever you want to engineer a people for success or failure, you control their music and you control their movies. Mm. Whenever you control the people's music and you control the people's movies, you control them. That's right. That's why most of you strung out on all sorts of negative black exploitation films. That's right. That Tyler Perry stuff. I respect that brother. He used to live out of his car. And he went from that to, to, a, to a billionaire. So I respect it. I just don't like the way he did it. And he had the potential to do it another way. He's taking old negative images of black people from slavery, remixed them. Mm -hmm into modern flicks and making billions of dollars off of disrespectful images of black people. Mm -hmm. We thought Color Purple was bad. Mm -hmm. We thought Waiting to Exhale was bad. Mm -hmm. Did you see Precious? Yeah. Did you see the Color Girls into Sean Gay's, uh... Yeah. 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 Sick! Yeah. Everybody in every movie is crazy. Yeah. You notice that? Everybody in every movie got something wrong with him in the Tyler Perry flicks. But if you know Tyler Perry's psycho history, you understand why. Because he was sexually molested by men and women as a child. And so his hatred for that comes out in every movie. You don't like men or women. I'm one well gone with. You sexually molested. He admitted on Oprah Winfrey on television. He said, and so you got all that money, you need to get some therapy. Yeah. All that money gets you. You notice how richest people are crazy as hell? Yeah. Some of y'all running around wanting to get rich, which means you're going to be crazy as hell too. Money don't make you happy. Money has never made people happy. So why do you think money makes you happy? Because in a capitalist society, they do what? They love to prey on unhappy people by telling you that if you buy this expensive thing, you'll feel better. And you normally do until you get the first bill. Right. 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 So you're sitting at home. You're depressed. A Mercedes-Benz commercial comes in. You should be driving this. <laughs> you probably will feel better. So you go out, sacrifice yourself, you get the Mercedes Benz for the first month, you cool. Everybody looking at yeah. you, you think you're yeah, cool. Yeah. But it's really just pleasure, right, not right. peace of mind. Uh -huh. And then a month later, the bill comes. <laughs> and then the insurance bill comes. Uh -huh. And what happens to all that happiness? Right. Now you mad right. at yourself. So now you watch the TV again next week. Uh -huh. And now the Cadillac truck comes on. What you really needed was a truck, four by four. <laughs> and so you're back out there, you switch the car, and now you're going into debt. Trying to buy your way out of unhappiness. That's why black male female relationships don't work. Why? All right, come on. Because too many of us are getting married because we're looking for somebody to make us happy. Why you can't make your own damn self happy? All right. You want to drop all your baggage off on my front step? The trash can is out there. Why are you giving it to me? Come on. All right. This is real.
world with a, I want somebody to make me happy. Can't nobody make you happy but yourself. Yeah. Happiness is the internal generally yeah. emotion. Yeah. That's a mindset. Nobody get happy. You? Yeah. And if you got low self-esteem, you shouldn't be dating anyway because the only thing a low self-esteem person is going to get is hurt. Uh -huh. it's hurt. Right. hurt. If you got low self-esteem, that means you don't have the ability to walk away from a situation that ain't in your right. best interest. Uh -huh. right. If I could change one thing in okay. black women, I would raise all your self-esteem up 100 points. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. These sisters are allowing themselves to be exploited by less than favorable conditions yes, because you think you need a man to be a woman. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then our daughters grow up and they watch this. And they internalize it, so now they think they need a man to be a woman too. Yeah. Oh, so then you run into a man who loves to manipulate women, and now you all in trouble because you can't walk away when you see the situation ain't good for you. And most of the time, you're just looking for the love from your father that you never got. Mm -hmm. And because he's not there, you're trying to get a man to replace him, which he cannot do. Sisters, when you date brothers, if the brother don't respect his mother, why do you think he's going to respect you? Yeah.